can put them up later. KDHL, are you going to switch it over to us? to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin Upon that cross, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. All together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. And then we make our beginning this evening in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, asking Him for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. 
Lord, to you I make confession. I have sinned and gone astray. I have multiplied transgression, chosen for myself my way. Led by you to see my errors, Lord, I tremble at your terrors. On you I cast my burden, sink it in deepest sea. Let me know your gracious pardon, cleanse me from iniquity. Let your spirit leave me never, make me only yours forever. And dear friends, I do have good news for you. Christ has died to remove your sin, and you are washed clean in his blood. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of God, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Lord God, our strength, we struggle between good and evil all around us. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings, first of which this evening comes to us from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And the nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our epistle lesson comes to us today from Ephesians chapter 3, where Paul writes, For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister, according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me through the work, by the working of his power. To me, though I am very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence 
through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our good news song. I ask you to rise as you are able for this song. What would we hold this Sunday night? A king is born in Bethlehem. Our journey long, we seek the light that leads to the hallowed with danger ground. What few we felt in silent age, for hundred years can he be found, but broken by the baby's cry. Rejoice in the hallowed manger ground. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God incarnate, here to Exalted now, the King of Kings brings God to the power with danger crown. to us today from Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own way, to their own country by another way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Also for our Lenten services this year, we will be having various narrative passion readings. And so for this evening, Nevaeh Weig will be reading our passion reading from John 18. This is a reading from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all this would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you, I that I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you have gave me, I have not lost one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants and cut off his right ear. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and the captain and officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. This is the word of the Lord. We now continue on page six with the message song, Christmas Offering. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne. Before the Holy One of Heaven. It's only God your blood, and it's only through your mercy. Bring an offering to you. We bring an offering. 
we sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, we bring an offering to you. Oh, Lord, we bring an offering to you. Oh, Lord, we bring an offering to you. So then, dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Might feel a little bit strange to be singing some Christmas songs, but the theme for our Lenten worship this year is from the star to the cross. I was approached by Kevin Krieger as he was trying to come up with some ideas for, uh, for worship themes this year, especially for decorating the, the church. And he wanted to emphasize this star that was made for us by Steve Denninger and how that still is relevant to us to this day. And that's what I want us to see, is how this Christmas celebration that we come together and so happily celebrate every year cannot be by itself, but must be seen in, in the grand scheme of the entire story of Christ. When we get together for Christmas, it is, is such a joyous time, isn't it? Normally in Lent, it's rather depressing. A lot of stories of betrayal, of Christ being beaten. But we like Christmas. Christmas is fun. There's presents, there's all these different parties that we get to go to, there's all this food, there's just, it's so wonderful. But also in our readings, we, we see all of these prophecies for the Christ. All of these prophecies that are saying, somebody is coming who is going to save us. Somebody is going to redeem us. Somebody is going to help us. And so there's a lot of joy. And as we see the Christ child born, finally, as we celebrate on Christmas, it, there's so much hope found in this one little baby. This Jesus is the long-expected Messiah, Savior, Son of Man. Since the beginning, people have been expecting His arrival. The one who would be born of a woman who would crush sin and death and restore the relationship between God and people. We see, especially in the prophets, as they experience the, the pain and suffering of the exile, that harsh punishment that is given by a loving father to his rebellious children. Their desire is to no longer be rebellious. They want to be made new. They want new hearts. And so they are an anticipating this Son of Man to be born, to save them, to make them new. But what we find in our reading is that these people are nowhere to be found when he finally arrives. Herod the king has no idea where the Christ is to be born. The scribes themselves have to go and look it up. Where is the anticipation? Well, what we see is that creation is celebrating the arrival of this child as we see a star rising and declaring his birth. And again, what's so depressing is that it's not the people that God has chosen. It's not the Israelites who notice it, but it's the Gentiles. These are people who do not worship God. They do not fear God, but yet they notice something significant and very serious is happening. And so important for them that they travel a great distance to go and meet him, bringing expensive gifts fit for a king. And while we might shake our heads at the people of Israel for not getting it, let us really focus on these magi. These are very significant people. We don't know if there were three. We don't really, they're not really kings. These are sorcerers. These are guys who practice magic. They're astrologers. They try and divine the signs and the stars. And this very significant thing is happening and it's amazing that they're the ones who get it. Because for so long, the prophecies that were given were for the people of Israel. 
that they would be saved, that they would be redeemed. And even those visions that brought in the other nations, they were gathering to Israel. But now Israel is not here. Now what we see is that the world is seeing the benefits of this Christ who was born, this promised one who is being given to the Gentiles here. Because realistically, as Gentiles, we know that the pain and suffering felt from sin is not exclusive to the Jews. All humanity feels it. And so here we have non-Israelites coming forth to bring their adoration to the Christ. But reflecting this Lent on this child who was born, we must remember that this is a child born to die. Isaiah gives us a glimpse in chapter 53 of his book. This is the famous suffering servant chapter. Beginning at verse 2, For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. This suffering servant, as we celebrate at Christmas, is just a baby. This suffering servant is the one who is visited by the Magi. This suffering servant is the one who would take up all sins of all people, bear them on our behalf. He who knew no sin became sin. In this Jesus, we witness his suffering on the behalf of all people. Let me emphasize that he is doing this as a servant for all people. For so long, the Jews thought that they were the only ones who were receiving this redemption. But it is for all people who suffer from the effects of sin. And so Jesus is betrayed, is arrested, is condemned by his own people. He is cursed to die. His own people mock him. And after his final breath, who understands who this suffering servant is? But a Roman centurion. Not the people who he was sent for. But that doesn't matter. For Jesus' sacrifice to be successful, he had to be condemned. He had to be forsaken. In his death, in his condemnation, there is redemption. By the blood shed on the cross, we have been purchased back from the hands of sin. And through all of this, we know God. We grow deeper in our faith. We get more connected back to our God because the relationship has been restored. This is the prophesied glory that Isaiah speaks of in our reading from today. The glory of Zion which he speaks of is a reality because of the death of Christ. We were in that darkness and upon us all has that light shined. Not just for one nation but for all nations. And as John wonderfully says, Jesus is that light. And to that light all nations shall gather. We get to see the nations gather together in this. For so long the center of worship for the Israelites was Jerusalem. In order to do almost anything in their faith, you had to go to Jerusalem. But now, after Christ, everything changes and we see this all coming together in the early church as this new Christian phenomenon is spreading throughout the Roman world. Paul writes to the Ephesians and tells them of these promises that they are fellow heirs, that they are given all of these same things that the Jews were promised because of Christ. Paul tells us that of this he has been made a minister a person who brings this to others. And I tell you today that we have all been made ministers of this gospel. 
We've kind of reserved that word in English for the guys who wear the collar, right? That I am the minister and you are not. But the reality is, is that we are all ministers of this gospel, but yet we serve it in different ways. Not all of you are in this pulpit. Not all of you come up to this altar to distribute the gifts of God. But yet all of you possess this wonderful and magnificent gospel that Christ and the Spirit have given you. It might be leading a Bible study. It might be praying for others. It might be serving a meal. It might be cooking soup for a midweek service. It might be cleaning up afterwards. It might be singing. But in all these things, the gospel is richly proclaimed. Regardless of the way in which you do it, it is all for that one gospel. That one gospel that tells all people of the love of God and the redemption they have received. The redemption that we all know from the blood shed on the cross for us. And Lent is a great opportunity for you to start ministering this gospel to others. If you don't know where to begin, start where you already are. And I think it's important that we remember that this story connects all the way back to Christmas. These aren't separate things that just happen at their set time. Christmas is still to be celebrated to this day. Easter is to be celebrated every day, even in the midst of Lent, when we focus solely on the cross. Because it is in these historical events that we are saved. God did not just say that you are redeemed. God gave himself for you to buy you back from sin. And I think what's really important to remember is, as you're called to minister this gospel, so often, at least from my mind, we immediately jump to non-Christians. But there are still plenty of Christians around us that need to hear this gospel as well. To know that they have been redeemed. If you are like me, your, your sins weigh you down and cause you to struggle and burden you. You need to hear this gospel. I need to hear it every day. Otherwise, it's just too depressing. But yet, it is in this that we minister the gospel to one another and to all those people that God has put around us. And so again, if you don't know where to start, start where you are. If you know how to cook, start cooking. If you've got a strong back, you can serve in many places. But you have been placed in a specific place, at a specific time, around a specific people. And God is calling you to minister to them the love and mercy of God. That is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, now we are going to continue in our worship by gathering our tithes, offerings, and other gifts to the Lord. Um, we will also, again, uh, continue to have the connection team bring us song. Uh, the lyrics for the song are printed on the bottom of page 6.
to rise and join me on page seven for the prayers of the church. Let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, we gather here to worship you and to bring our prayers to you. We pray that you would hear all the prayers which we lift up. We especially pray this evening that you help us to focus on the entire journey of Christ in our Lenten preparations, that we would see how this star that rose before the Magi and came to rest over the house of Mary and Joseph, how that story is relevant to the story of the suffering servant who took our place on the cross. We pray, Lord, that you help us to live in the forgiveness that was won for us in that cross that we would know all of this story and that we would live it every day of our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us with your Holy Spirit and enable us to do this. But, Lord, we lift up many other prayers to you. We pray especially for our loved ones, lifting up Nikki, Jake, Harper, and Maggie, Bill and Judy, Tim, Diane, Donna Babcock, Verna Ball, Mandy Bloom, Ginger Burns, Austin Ellerbush, James McBride, Bob Meyer, Julia Morrissey, Jenny Moore, Barb Roach, Nancy Schultz, Kay Smith, Marty Snyder, Reverend Maynard Spitzak, Dennis Wiskoski, and all those other names that we carry in our hearts and lift up to you now. Lord, in all these things, we pray in the most precious name of Jesus Christ. And we would pray that you would hear us all now as we join together in Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, 
where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And then for the Lord's Prayer, this is something that many of you might not be familiar with. We normally sing it in the Connection service, and this is the newer version, so many of you might not be familiar with it. Just follow the lead of our Connection team and uh, keep your hearts in prayer. everlasting life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us close in song with Jesus Messiah. As we leave this place, let's remember the amazing love Jesus showed to us by shedding his blood on us, uh, on the cross for us. He is the light of the world, and in whom we have our hope. To him be the glory. Let's sing. He became sin, ruled of sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing.
seated. You guys are really getting a, a good workout today. You're earning that soup, right? So for our matters of importance this evening, first up, uh, the ordination and installation of Vicar Gottlieb Greet will be this Sunday at 2 p.m. We need a ton of help. Uh, we need help with setup, serving, cleanup, uh, some soups and desserts. Uh, there's plenty of room on the sign-up sheets in the, uh, at the information center. Please sign up if you have the time. Also, with our soup suppers, we have two dates open, first of which being next week and then the week following. And so, unfortunately, folks, if nobody signs up, there's no soup. How can you have church without soup, right? So, if you would like to host one of those soup suppers, you, yourself, or a group, uh, and then figure out a place to give donations to, uh, contact Ginny in the church office, and she can help you out with all of that. FLS is having their play, the Old Testament Fast Forward. It's going to be tomorrow, March 14th, at 6.30 p.m. If you can't make the evening performance, you're welcome to attend the dress rehearsal at 12.30 p.m. that day. So that's tomorrow. Francis Swee's funeral is also tomorrow at 11 with a visitation beforehand and a lunch to follow. So it's going to be kind of chaotic when it comes to parking tomorrow. So I ask for your patience as we try and, and sort things out to get people in the right place. The funeral, we're going to ask that you park on the eastern side and then the, the play for the western side. Um, if you're going to go to the uh, dress rehearsal tomorrow, there is a, uh, there's chapel at 1030 and then a, um, a, a brunch meal before the, uh, the play starts. No? Oh, it's not brunch anymore. It's what? It's just sandwich, just a sandwich. That's it. Just that's it for everybody. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can make it a nice day. It's a, it's a visitor's day, so you are welcome to come and uh, support the school in that way. And then on Friday, we're hosting a blood drive from 1 to 7 p.m. It'll be over in the fellowship hall. You can sign up through the Red Cross's website, or you can also just walk in. Uh, we'd be happy to have you donate some blood and help save some lives. There's always a need for blood donations. So the soup supper tonight is uh, Zupa Toscana and Chili. All the proceeds are benefiting the Trinity FLS Scholarship Fund, and the group sponsoring this evening is God's West Enders Neighborhood Group. Um, uh, one final announcement before we join together in prayer. Uh, if you did not grab one of those cross in my pocket things, uh, they are on the uh, worship carts. You're free to take one, and if you know somebody who could use one, grab one for them as well. Now, uh, let's get to uh, the meal, so let's first join together in a word of prayer. Please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful worship that you have given us, led in song by our Connection team. 
We thank you for uh, your word that uh, you have brought to us, and we pray that it would change our lives and, and uh, that you would bless us with your spirit to, uh, to go out and serve as you have called us to do. But also, Lord, you've called us to join together in fellowship as brothers and sisters in Christ, to lean upon one another in all of our burdens, but also in all of our joys. So we pray that you would be with us this evening, and especially as we pray, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. And now, go in peace as you serve the Lord. Amen.